Welcome everyone. Today we're making meatball enchiladas. That's right. So what we have here are some meatballs in a casserole. We're going to have some enchilada sauce in there with cheese and onions and spices and all kinds of good stuff. You can actually serve this up either with some Spanish rice and beans, which of course I have videos for you to make that, or you can just take a tortilla and fill a tortilla with the meatballs and the sauce and the corn and everything that's in it, and it's delicious. So I'm Rockin' Robin, and I can't wait to show you how to make it right after this. I'm calling these juggling meatball enchiladas, and stay tuned to find out why. Before we go over the ingredients, I just want to mention that you can make this gluten-free or not. That's up to you. But today I'm going to show you the gluten-free version and the products that I'm using. Okay, so first up is we're going to need some enchilada sauce. So instead of using canned stuff, which really isn't very good, I've got two recipes for you. One's gluten-free, one's not. I'll leave links down below in the description of this video. And uh, you can, you know, make it. It takes just 15 minutes. Very simple and very delicious. We'll need some ground beef. Now I'm using 100% grass-fed ground beef here. I have some grated cheddar cheese, breadcrumbs. Now the, this is the brand that I'm using that's gluten-free and I'll hopefully I'll have a link for you down below in the description where you can pick that up if you want to do it online. Next up is some corn, whole kernel corn here that's been drained. One egg. I've got a half of an onion that's finely diced. For our spices, I'm using some ground cumin, some oregano, garlic powder, and some salt. And the last ingredient for uh, inside the meatballs is some chopped cilantro. Now to you know, garnish up our dish, I'm going to be using some avocado. I'll cut that up into chunks. I've got some green onion, sour cream, and some tortilla chips that we can just put right on top. All right, we're going to start making our meatballs. So I've got my ground beef in a large bowl right here, and then we're going to add, and I like to sprinkle things in. So we're going to sprinkle in our onions and get them distributed throughout. Next goes our breadcrumbs, same thing. We'll add our spices and really sprinkle those around so they, you know, aren't in one big clump in one spot. We'll add our egg and work that in and then our cilantro. And if you don't like cilantro, you can use parsley. Okay, so now it's time to rock and roll our meatballs. That means we're gonna roll these into probably one and a half inch balls before we fry them on the stove. Hey. <laughs> Baby. Mm. Oh no. Da. On to cooking. All right, so we're going to start cooking our meatballs. We're done with our playing. And uh, I've got a large frying pan here over medium heat. And I'm going to place, I'm going to use avocado oil. You could use olive oil. Those are the only two I'd really recommend. Just the, they're just a good oil. Let that heat up. All right, the oil looks like it's getting hot. I'm gonna start placing these meatballs into the pan. Now we wanna cook them obviously until they're done. I'm gonna be rotating them. Uh, we're gonna cook them maybe two minutes on a side, two to three minutes, and then I'll flip them around. We wanna make sure the internal temperature is, you know, really like to be up to about 160. But we will be putting these in the oven for maybe 15 minutes or so, so they'll get a little more cooking time that way as well. But let's make sure that we get the temperature up. And I've got my instant read, read thermometer right here. We'll be checking that later. All right, let's have a look here. You can see they're starting to get a little crispy there, so I'm gonna flip them over, get nice and brown. And I might even cover these. You can cover them, you know, that'll help uh, cook them through quicker. But I like to get that nice little golden brown crust on the outside of them. It makes it for, you know, makes it taste really good. So I've turned my temperature down just a smidgen. I'm on medium low now. Oops. All 
kind of having a hard time keeping them on them on their sides to cook. So I think at this point I'm going to put the lid on it because they are they are not done yet. I can see that. Place the lid on that and let those cook another five minutes or so. All right, let's test these little rascals and see how they're doing. Uh, they've been cooking, you know, five, six minutes or so. With the lid on, they're gonna cook quicker. You can see they're nice and, you know, caramelized, got a little crust going on, which is wonderful. Let's get our instant read thermometer. These things are awesome, guys. They work so well and you just, you know where you're at. Okay. All right, this one's one, still climbing, 160, perfect. So these are done. Okay, so I have my oven preheating to 375 degrees. I have an eight by eight dish here that we're gonna use to go in the oven. I have my enchilada sauce over here and you want it to be warm before you, you know, you, you wouldn't wanna make it the day before and then just have it cold. Heat it up if you do that and then it's ready to go. Everything's pretty similar, you know, in terms of temperature. So I'm gonna pour some of this enchilada sauce into my dish. So I'm just gonna pour enough to cover the bottom of the dish. Something like, that's yeah, about half of what I have in here. And then I'm gonna add some corn to that. And I'm gonna just kind of mix it up a little bit. And then we're gonna take our meatballs and I'm going to just place them in the casserole. And I'm just kind of pushing these meatballs down into the sauce. Now we're gonna take some more sauce and I'm going to just kind of, you know, ladle it over the top so we cover those meatballs. It's always the sauce that makes the dish, guys, and this is really gonna be good. <laughs> and then we finish it up with a nice amount of cheese. I just pulled our casserole out of the oven after about 15 minutes. That was about what it took. You want everything to be, like I said, nice and bubbly. That cheese is really melted and it's nice and hot throughout. Okay, so to garnish it up, do it any way you like. I happen to really love avocado. So I would cut up, you know, some little chunks out of my avocado here. This dish would be a great dish to serve at a party. And you know, it'd be fantastic with some Spanish rice and some refried beans to go with it, or cilantro lime rice. I have all those recipes for you guys. I'll leave them down below in the description of this video and you can find them there. You know, this just would be so awesome. So I like to sprinkle some avocado, little chunks. Everybody gets a little bit. You can sprinkle on a few green onions. You can stick in some chips, you know, just wherever you want. And then of course our sour cream, you can put little dollops if you want. I love using the, the squeeze bottle because you know you can you have really good control over where the sour cream goes. Get me a chip and I'm gonna dig in. This is really delicious, guys. I hope you try it. That enchilada sauce, it's always about the sauce, right? I mean, the sauce is really what makes the dish, and this sauce makes this dish. Perfect with rice and beans, like I said. Check out those links, try this recipe. Let me know how you like it down below in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel, please click the subscribe button right up here at the end of the video or down below. Click the bell and you'll be notified when my new videos come out every week. That's what that bell's for, it tells you that. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.